are now here on Radio Free UK. We have the interview from the One Dimitri radio show we chose. And here Dimitri interviews Chris C. Horner. Chris is the author of the best-selling book, The Politically Incorrect Guide to Global Warming and Environmentalism, Power Grab and Red Hot Lies. A senior fellow with the Washington DC think tank, the Competitive Enterprise Institute, and affiliated with their European counterpart organisations. Listen on, this really is a humdinger. Now this guy turned out to be a great interview, and I had no idea this was going on. I mean, it's, it's, it is monstrous when you have lawyers using government to limit your freedom of speech. It's absolutely monstrous. And so I thought you'd like to hear it. So let's play that. On the blog I got an radio. email from this big deal public relations firm in Atlanta. I, do, I work with them a lot, and they send lots of information to me about, well, would you be interested in this guest or that guest, or this book or that you know, project or whatever. And sometimes I say yes because I think, okay, my listeners would like that. Other times, eh, I think I'll pass. I don't know. And that's typically how it works. Well, this time it was different. This time I get an email from this firm saying, we've got this new guy, a guy, frankly, I had never heard of. His name is uh, Chris Horner, and uh, what he's going to be talking about is, yes, he's got this book, but it's about this modern-day witch hunt on the part of some politicians led by the New York State Attorney General, where they're trying to use the law to effectively silence people by, 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 by saying they don't have any First Amendment rights if they dare to criticize climate change and who's causing climate change and all that. This is a First Amendment issue. And I looked at this and I went, you've got to be kidding me. This is the first I've heard of this. And so I thought, my goodness gracious, yeah, if we could ever book this guy, that would be great. But I read his bio and it was, uh, frankly, very impressive. I mean, he's uh, author of this best-selling book, The Politically Incorrect Guide to Global Warming and Environmentalism, Power Grab and Red Hot White Lie. And uh, he's uh, an attorney in D.C. He's uh, involved in a number of think tanks. He's been on the Fox News Channel, uh, MSNBC, BBC, CNN International, uh, The Daily Show with John Stewart, for heaven's sakes, and on and on and on. And I'm going... God, if we could ever get this guy, this would be fantastic because no one in the media seems to be covering this story, at least not that I'm aware of. And so uh, my people reach out to their people, and they go back and forth, back and forth, and they say, all right, fine, we can book this guy. You can get him for a few minutes, but understand, he's very busy, he's very popular, he's got a hundred one other things going on here. So, uh, Chris Horner, welcome to One Dimitri Radio. How are you doing, sir? I'm great. Thank you very much. So who exactly is this New York Attorney General Schneiderman? Tell me about this guy and why we should all be terrified. Well, uh, most relevantly, Schneiderman is uh, he's an activist, uh, hard left liberal attorney general in New York, uh, succeeded the governor there, Cuomo, and is using his office to, you may have read about him, uh, going after one of the candidates uh, for president's foundation. Not the other one, but one of them. Uh, he's big on demanding private records, but he also is big on organizing a stonewall among other ideologically aligned attorneys generals. Uh, about a campaign that he led, uh, we do have some records we've obtained from some AGs uh, that he organized to go after, to use law enforcement offices and racketeering laws to pursue, to silence, extract a gusher of money from political opponents, people who are standing in the way of this global warming agenda because they're frustrated they can't obtain it through the proper democratic process. So they're going to abuse law enforcement office. So Schneiderman organizes this group of AGs. They have a big press conference in March, the end of March of this year. Al Gore's there. One reporter there asks, is this a PR stunt? Uh, And he says, no, this is not a PR stunt. Uh, But it plainly was. It's worse, though. Uh, They get Gore there. They get several AGs. We start sending what are called FOIA requests, Freedom of Information Act. It's called different things in different states. Um, We send state level to New York. It's called FOIA in New York. And we find out from other AGs, Schneiderman's on lockdown. He's gone into the bunker. He's hiding everything. And and by by the time we finish speaking today, we will have sued him yet again uh, this afternoon. Nice. Um, Because he is clamping down on – did I mention these are public records? But they're showing scheming among law enforcement officers to go after political opponents. Now, so we get out of various others. Like Vermont was the first one to release anything. And now they've gone into the bunker because it blew up in everyone's face. But it shows that – AGs, attorneys general in Iowa and Delaware, for example, fled immediately. 
After their meeting before the press conference, the Iowa AG staff start emailing him, calling Eric is clearly the wild card because the guy's obviously untethered. He's, he's, he's abusing his office. He's seeking to extract a settlement fund out of energy company, Any, anybody who subjects you to the horrors of affordable, abundant, reliable energy. But also they start – he's going after records of think tanks – uh, Non-for-profit groups, for example, ones I work with, the Competitive Enterprise Institute, he's asking uh, the attorneys general from various states, the U.S. Virgin Islands, they all get together to, to, to shake down industry and silence their opposition. And, and, and we're pulling out records state by state under great you – know, I mean, out of their clutches. They don't want to let these things go, particularly after Vermont really had a blow up in their face when they, they started complying with their law. And it just shows that they were very nervous about Schneiderman to begin with. He's standing alone. All his wingman left. Uh, Massachusetts even uh, said they're putting their suit on hold. The U.S. Virgin Islands withdrew theirs. He's standing there holding the bag, and we're going to get those records because so far what we found is these guys are not only violating civil rights. We have First Amendment rights to political speech, as you noted, but it's a violation of the criminal code, the federal criminal code. If only we had a federal Department of Justice for two or more people to combine to violate the civil rights, the First Amendment speech rights of others. So we've uncovered a, some racketeering, you might say. We've uncovered a scheme, and they're fighting us, and they're making us go to court to get public records after they went hounding political opponents for private records. So you're saying, if I understood you correctly, I'm barely a high school graduate. What I think you're saying, correct me if I'm wrong, that the – Attorneys general in all these states, all these big deal lawyers were involved in a racketeering criminal enterprise to take away my right to free speech? It's clearly a, viola a civil violation of civil rights. It's, it, on its face, it's a violation. It's a criminal violation of civil rights, and it appears to be yes. If they're looking for RICO, the racketeer influence corrupt organization violations, he's in the mirror. Because these guys have gotten together in what is, on its face, a criminal conspiracy. And remember, they're attorneys general, chief legal officers of their state. Now, being in Pennsylvania, you know that AGs are not saints, right? Oh, so, yeah. yeah. So they have their problems. Well, this guy Schneiderman rounds up a bunch of people who immediately get nervous about him. The Delaware AG fled, according to emails we've obtained. Once FOIA, Freedom of Information Act requests started coming in, the Delaware AG unsigned his – unsigned – he had signed and sent a signature block, I'm in on your secrecy pact and your deal. And he sent an email in response to a notice, hey, they're starting to send FOIA requests. We will not be participating in your worthy effort. I mean, like that. Though people might look at what we're doing. We might actually, the hunter may become the hunted. Well, then they start dropping like flies. And so the Schneiderman is standing alone. He didn't get your, your now, what, former AG involved, which is somewhat surprising. Because this is this is really a sleazy scheme. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's he's left standing, and they're all still protecting him because they're all caught up in it. They're not just doing Mr. Sharkskin suits bidding here. They're also protecting themselves. These are politicians abusing law enforcement officers who are getting caught at it. So they're all fighting us. But again, the law's on our side, and we've been winning these FOIA cases, and we're going to win these. All right. So give me a, the best example you have of this Freedom of Information Act FOIA. Thing. What what was the one great thing you discovered? Was there some sort of a smoking gun email or letter or something? Yeah. Okay. So there's a there's a series there's a thread an email a series of correspondence emails between the Vermont Attorney General's Office, the New York Attorney General's Office, and a Green Group activist contingency fee lawyer. Any other appealing aspects of this person I can mention? Green Group activist contingency fee lawyer who these AGs bring in to go after people they don't like. And in it, the, the green activist says, hey, uh, a reporter's calling. Uh, I don't, you know, what should I tell her? It turns out it's, it's Amy Harder from the Wall Street Journal. She's calling about something completely different, right? But it turns out these AGs had brought in green activists, the Union of Concerned Scientists and this lawyer and others, to brief them in Al Gore right before they marched out on the stage for their PR stunt. So the green emails the AGs and says, there's a reporter calling. What should I do? And the New York AG says, my ask is that you don't admit that you were part of this meeting. He suggested this guy to mislead the press. Oh, my God. Now, this was given to us by Vermont. 
Well, we just get now the, the thieves are falling out, like in every old Western, right? Right at the end when it comes time to split up the loot, the thieves fall out. So now Vermont uh, releases this and, and embarrasses New York. So New York just buries in a, in, a, in a bunch of chaff they release, making a sue for the good stuff. They bury one thread in which Vermont's saying, expressing gratification to the green. The green says, good, good, I thought that made sense, and Vermont is thanking him effusively for, for agreeing to mislead the press, that he had nothing to do with it. It's pretty – it's one of the juicy ones, but it's typical. They're hiding what they're up to. Remember, these aren't their records. They're ours. One guy said once, I paid for this microphone. Well, they're using our offices, our chair, our com computers, our everything to, to go after political opponents. And by the way, this should only matter if you don't care about global warming, energy rationing, killing seniors through energy prices and so on. Uh, this should only worry you if you either have – or someday may have a dissenting political viewpoint. Others need, can tune out. But if you may want to express a position that is not the one that the New York Times at all have agreed upon, then this is something to worry about because these AGs are, it turns out, they're scheming with activists. And he, we found out this was organized in 2012 by the Rockefeller family at a meeting in La Jolla where they got together a bunch of activists saying, we want to use racketeering laws. Um, let's get some AG attorneys general to do it for us. We found academics. We sued a university in Virginia, got a bunch of records showing that the faculty lounge was scheming to try to get the Federal Department uh, of Justice after us because we're standing in the way of their ideological agenda, the Federal Department of Justice. So we've got emails showing this scheming, showing that it was driven by the Rockefellers. Union of Concerned Scientists comes together with these activist lawyers to brief attorneys general and Al Gore, who then turn from that room, march out on a stage, and say, we're going to stop bad people, and it's in the name of racketeering and fraud. So if the uh, lawyers, these attorneys general, got their way, would I have been allowed to say that I don't believe man-caused global warming is a problem or what I've been thrown in prison or what would have happened to me here's what they that actually asks what was the next juicy thing you found well we found a secrecy agreement which described what they want to do it's they, they called it what's called a common interest agreement and anybody here who's been, been involved in these things you know, if you have common legal interests you can have privilege between people and keep things private but these these are attorneys general from various states. They have no – with green groups, they have no common legal interest. What they had is they, they wrote themselves a get-out-of-FOIA-free card, hoping to protect all of this scheming with outside activists and Al Gore and so on. Well, in it, buried in paragraph one, they say that they're going to go after people who have – uh, been insufficiently enthusiastic about the what's called renewables agenda, windmills and solar panels, which are actually uh, energy technologies from the 80s, 1887 to be precise. Uh, they're not new. They don't just need a chance to compete. They're commercial failures. Well, but they're big donors <laughs> because we've been under creating this, this big phony industry. And so if you've stood in the way of that agenda, if you've, um, be, if you've blocked global warming regulation, if you've opposed it, uh, they're calling it fraud. And by the way, they're saying there's no First Amendment right to protect fraud just because they're saying, hey, we yelled fraud, so you have to abandon your First Amendment rights. Just because you call opposition to your agenda fraud doesn't make it fraud, sir. Uh, it means it's opposition to your political agenda. So what they want to do is they want to use their powers to seek, silence you through the threat of litigation – extract a settlement fund, and you wouldn't be targeted for that, I doubt. They're, they're aiming at energy companies for the fund, but they want to get a vow of silence from opposition, period. A gusher of revenue annually, like the tobacco settlement fund, to underwrite their buddies who are scheming with them, and uh, a vow not to support bad people. So my guess is, no, they're not immediately thinking of you, but again, not being an energy company, I said nothing. Let, you know, let's not go down that path, they cast a very broad net here in who they want to go after, and what they describe is parties who have stood in their way, stood in their way of a, remember this, political agenda. So I can't write you an exemption. I can't guarantee you they don't want anything to do with you. Um, if you become a threat, I've noticed, then they become interested in you. My God in heaven, this is Orwellian beyond belief. I'm talking with Chris Horner. He is the author of the runaway bestseller, The Politically Incorrect Guide to Global Warming and Environmentalism, Power Grab and Red Hot Lies. And 
Yeah, uh, th- I'm just, I'm just absolutely, uh, I'm just, I'm just stunned by by this. Now, with all these lawyers um, who are rigging the system, and I, God Almighty, every day we talk about lawyers rigging the system this way or that way, Chris. Whether it's uh, Comey, who's a lawyer with the FBI, and Hillary Clinton and all of her cronies, all lawyers rigging the system. Why is it that when lawyers rig a system, they never go to prison? Well, it's a bit of a club. However, I just had a conversation with a, a, a former, very well-known prosecutor, fe, fe, federal, nationally known prosecutor, who was discussing this with me because there are ethical problems when you misstep as a lawyer. Now, so – are they in trouble? Well, we found some things that they're going to great lengths. You know these AG's offices are using Gmail? What? On some work, yeah, some work-related correspondence. You'll hear more about that. It's, got, it's not quite ripe. There may, I found a false identity called Richard Windsor some time ago. The EPA administrator had a false identity for her email. Oh, uh, and she God. Okay, Richard Windsor. Well, we, there's, a, there's an indication in some documents buried in one production that – one of these AGs is using somebody else's email account, too, because they don't like scrutiny. They love getting private people's records if those private people are political opponents. They don't like turning over public records. They're stonewalling it. We know they're using some Gmails in some of these offices. We found them um, on hot-button issues, including energy environment. And it looks like one of the AGs may be using as a point of contact somebody else's account. So if this is the case – um, then they will have things to answer for. Could they be held account? Look, here's what they are subject to. One of the groups I work with called the Competitive Enterprise Institute, the U.S. Virgin Islands AG, who was clearly not up to the job, he came out swinging. And maybe he was sort of the useful idiot because, uh, with all due respect, because he, he was the one guy who didn't have the, you know, AG stands for aspiring governor. Maybe the U.S. Virgin Islands AG is the only one who didn't see a governor in the mirror when he shaved. But he came out asking for 10 years of this think tank's records beginning 20 years ago. Now, he has since dropped that, and CEI is seeking sanctions against him in the Washington, D.C. courts. He's in trouble, and he should be. But they're also exposed to counter-civil suits. Does that frighten them? I don't know. If we had a federal Department of Justice who was not busy, as they have admitted, considering whether to also join the fun and go after climate skeptics, the Attorney General Loretta Lynch acknowledged this in a hearing when she was pressed by Senator Sheldon Whitehouse of Rhode Island, who's been involved in this scheme for a few years. Yes, they were looking into going after us. A real Department of Justice would look at what we know already. There's a guy named Glenn Reynolds, who's known as Instapundent, who wrote a column. He's a University of Tennessee law professor, and he wrote a column in USA Today when this first broke saying, hey, attorneys general, you're violating the criminal code, 18 U.S.C. 241. You are conspiring to violate the civil rights of others. They happen to be political opponents, people standing in the way of your agenda. That should scare them, but none of those consequences come unless you have a Department of Justice that is – willing to take on political allies, willing to do what the New York Times doesn't want it to do, willing to ignore calls for utter, I mean, utterly corrupt politicization of DOJ and go after political opponents, and instead to say, you know what, we've got on its face prima facie evidence of attorneys general organizing to stifle the First Amendment rights of others' political opponents. Yeah, they would face problems. So I'm not going to say it will never happen. But several things need to occur, like the Department of Justice needs to right that ship, pause, wait for laughter, before any real consequence, I I think, before any real consequences are visited on these people. Well, what about attorneys general from states that are not part of this thing, like, I don't know, Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, whatever? Can't they sue or do something legally to expose these other attorneys generals and then have them lose their licenses or something there's several things they could look into it first of all it needs to be okay so they've got to have a problem in their state now some emails we've abstracted show that some of these ags the schemers are saying well we don't have this problem but we're willing to help out if you need some muscle Mm. that was washington state for example some in response, I think 17 all Republican attorneys general did write them and say, you know, if you think that 
exaggerating or excuse me doubting climate risk is is fraud you might want to consider the potential fraud that lies in exaggerating climate risk for gain i don't know if anybody does that someone might check i don't read many newspapers but it does strike me that we have an awful lot of for-profit alarmists running around that's how i got into this industry i was with enron as director of federal government relations for about three weeks when they told me back in 97 okay they were they were trying to get a global warming treaty because they had bought a bunch of windmills and they had gas pipelines and they were going to get rich 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 off the taxpayer mm. there's a lot of that going on it's called rent seeking and they're underwriting the greens and so on and and they're financing these campaigns of politicians so what the republican ags did is they fired a shot across the bow and said you know, there, are, there may be a little more under this rock if you really want to lift it. What they didn't do is indicate that these AGs might be um, uh, crossing the line. But that doesn't mean that private citizens can't. Anybody who is the subject of this has a cause of action against these people. Remember, it doesn't necessarily mean they're acting outside the scope of their office. They may be abusing their office, but there is no... There is no charge to a state attorney general to engage in racketeering, so they would be personally liable. This isn't the office speaking. These are people who are abusing their office in their personal capacity. Well, why don't you, Chris, I'm talking to Chris uh, Horner, by the way, the author of the runaway bestseller, The Politically Incorrect Guide to Global Warming. Uh, why don't you sue them then? These things take time, and here's where we are. We're in court. We have sued. We've sued Rhode Island. We've sued New York twice. We've sued Vermont twice. Uh, we will sue another one next week. We are suing them civilly to obtain records which show, so far, what I'm saying. And I suspect the, one that they're, the ones they're fighting like grim death to keep hold of probably show a lot more, but it doesn't matter. They're ours. They're not theirs. They're public records. And at that point, we can reevaluate. What's it? Remember, we, we can be private attorneys general under the RICO statute if they've committed some like wire fraud or something. But otherwise, we just have civil remedies. And right now, we're pursuing the civil remedy of give us the document showing what you've been up to, because what we have so far, to mix metaphors, really stinks to high heaven. Well, why hasn't any lawyer lost at least his license for behaving this way, for racketeering, uh, this whole RICO thing. I mean, if it was an Italian gangster, he'd be in prison, John Gotti or whatever. But these guys get away with it, and they don't even get uh, slapped on the wrist by losing their law license. How do they get away I'm not with willing it? To, I'm not willing to say they're going to get away with it yet. Remember, this thing's moving, believe it or not, at relative warp speed, given that this press conference was March 29th. I got my first document production in mid-April, at which point when that blew up in all of their faces – they clamp down, but we already – we have been extracting – this is late March, and we're talking about getting documents out of governments, reluctant, politicized offices. We've already got enough that these folks should be pursuing other career opportunities. Um, I suggest by the end of the calendar year, we're going to have an awful lot more. And so this is – given what we're dealing with, this is the legal system and reluctant law enforcement officers fighting to, to under a secrecy pact to keep things secret – um, we've done pretty well in, in four months. Okay, fair enough. Now, here's what I don't understand. Well, a lot of things I don't understand. One of them is, how in God's name is this not one of the great lead stories in all the newspapers and radio and TV and Internet throughout the nation? To me, when I read this, when I got the email from your big deal PR firm in Atlanta, I was going, holy cow, I didn't even know about this. Why isn't the media covering this Story. This is an amazing story where attorneys general from roughly half the states have conspired in some kind of racketeering thing to deny people their First Amendment rights to shake down big companies. I mean, this is an amazing story. Why so little coverage of it? Two anecdotes. One involves the Washington Post. I mentioned the, br the brief flirtation with Enron before I then was gone after having raised questions about this scheme of theirs in the same realm, pushing the global warming agenda to get rich. Um, after the collapse, when suddenly the Washington Post was interested, it was everybody's favorite energy company. Now they could tie it to the new president they hated, Bush. Uh, they interviewed me and wanted to know the whole story. And I told them the whole Enron getting together with Union of Concerned Scientists and some utilities and gas companies, and, and they were pushing this, and Baptist and bootlegger coalitions, getting a treaty, a treaty to ration energy and pay, pay poor countries to stay poor. And big, nasty scheme among a company we know was corrupt trying to make money doing nothing. 
beautiful story. And by the time I finished, the reporter – and the story appeared in late – I think oh oh one um, right around Christmas. He tapped the pencil to his forehead and said, "You know, I suppose I could say you're telling me they weren't that bad after all." And I said, "Where? In what I told you, where did you get that?" And he he goes, "Well, I mean, global warming." <laughs> so it's like they're all Leonardo DiCaprio here, just complete empty-headed. Uh, you said global warming. Uh, you, you 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 uttered the magic words. Uh, therefore, all sins are forgiven as long as it's done in the name of global warming. It's a noble lie. It's a noble crime, whatever. That shows you where the Washington Post is. Other papers, for example, the New York Times won a Pulitzer Prize for a three-part series on attorneys general working with energy companies but with no suggestion of impropriety. Someone asked me, what's the difference between what you found and what the New York Times wrote about? And the answer is a Pulitzer Prize <laughs> because – they're not interested here. The, it's the wrong kind of people. These are renewable energy companies, and they are Democrat attorneys general. That's the, that's the only distinction except we have found actual impropriety. But they are not interested. I have worked with them. And ultimately, even after showing, for example, a series of 18 months of emails, the comeback was, well, you couldn't demonstrate any follow-up. And I said, there are at least 17 months of follow-up in these 18 months of emails. And it was like, that's code, like blinking torture. We can't write this story. This isn't the New York Times. Now, if you switch the part, you make it, make it a, you know, instead of an, uh, an oil company, uh, make it uh, windmills the other, or the other way around, windmills and oil companies instead of uh, Democrats. Can you find some Republicans? Um, and I can tell you some reporters have told me, we've been given a lot of documents showing AGs working with companies. Do you have any balance? And I gave it to him, and the story disappeared. You know why? When given the balance, on balance, I was showing actual impropriety. Remember, th what I've described to you is impropriety, and we're nowhere near done with this. And what they're saying is I found Republicans talking to energy companies, energy the kind that works, the stuff that works that, that keeps us going. Um, that's the stuff of Pulitzer Prizes and, and fainting couches at the times, but when you say, here's actual impropriety, but I've got bad news. It involves Democrats and windmills. Oh, well, okay, you see, there's, there's probably a very good reason. Their heart's in the right place. You said global warming and so on. That is a, I'm sorry, somewhat cynical, but anecdote, <laughs> anecdotally supported uh, background of why this doesn't interest them. With right. that said, the Wall Street yeah. Journal and the New York Post and others are interested. They've been writing about these things. All right. Now, I've not seen hardly any of this on the Fox News channel or uh, much on Drudge or whatever. I mean, this was the first I've heard of this. This is an amazing story to me, and I had to find out from a public, a big deal public relations firm in Atlanta. Why, where's the alt-right press on this? All I can tell you is we issue press releases when we file suit, and um, like I say, the Journal and the New York Post have covered it. The others don't seem to want to. I will give Fox, not MSNBC or CNN, but Fox has covered other things. We found extensive Gmail use at EPA to write these rules with green groups on Yahoo accounts and Gmail. Uh, they covered that. We found Richard Windsor, the false identity of the administrator, which led to the – by the way, that led to the AP investigation, which found all the private email accounts, which helped lead to Hillary Clinton's problems now, though her actions precipitated those problems. So ultimately, some will cover it, however grudgingly. But Fox did cover the other things. Not this yet, but – there's clearly so much more to come. Maybe they're waiting for that. I just don't know. But, again, kudos to the New York Post and Wall Street Journal. They at least have covered this, and I suggest there's more to come because they, I think they see what they've got with Eric Schneiderman. This is, this is not a clean operation he's running. Yeah, and now kudos to One Dimitri Radio for also covering this. Uh, give some credit where credit is due here, Chris. Now, Absolutely. Be before I turn my microphone over to you because my guest always gets the last word, uh, two, two things. Uh, two questions. First question, is there anything else I should have asked you regarding this story that my listener would find really, really interesting? Who is behind this and why? I mean, the, ultimately, it's qui bono, right? Who, who benefits? Why are they doing this? And what I would have told you is there, uh, there are suggestions, as, as the Post is, New York Post has covered, that the New York Attorney General is raising money off of this for his campaign and campaign for governor. Um, there are suggestions that the Democrat Party's largest donor is behind this. I've been informed with pretty good specifics and dates 
of meetings between him and these attorneys general. And we know his demands were adopted in Philadelphia at the convention, including to use the Federal Department of Justice to go after company opponents of things he's invested in. So there are parties who – this isn't just ideology, well, you said global warming. It's about the usual things, money and power. There is money for the politicians. There is money for the donors. There's money for the green groups. And uh, it's a bottomless well. You're talking about a massive settlement fund. So, yeah, there's an awful lot there. I tell you what, uh, you can find – there's a lot of this at eelegal.org, and I know that's probably where you were going. It's gonna, it, you can find this at eelegal.org. And CEI, Competitive Enterprise Institute, CEI.org. Those two groups, CEI was targeted by one of these AGs. I work with both of them. E&E Legal has been suing the AGs uh, and will continue to do so, and as I mentioned, suing another one this afternoon, um, extracting the records. CEI succeeded in getting them out of a university. You've got public interest groups, uh, actual charitable groups doing public interest work, letting the public know how their resources are being used, abused, not just squandered, but abused, uh, to go after, again, it, it, this is only important if you've ever held or might hold a dissenting political viewpoint. Other than that, you should be fine. Yeah. Now, who is qui bono? Who's that? <laughs> it's just Latin for who benefits. Who stands to benefit? Oh, I actually thought that was a guy's name, like Sonny Bone. I certainly had no idea. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't rule that out. I don't right. rule that out. I don't speak Latin. That might be the email account name that Eric Schneiderman's using. I don't know. All right, last question before I hand you my microphone so you can get the last word, speak directly to my listeners. And that is my sources, the EU, tell me that you are the Chris Horner who runs with the Bulls in Pamplona. Is that true? Uh, used to be. Get a little long in the tooth for that. Yeah, but that, that was, uh, as I said, I used to do that to stay sane. How in God? What? What? Thinking behind that. Just it's tell there. me the thinking behind that. I've never understood the thinking behind that. It's there. You read a little too much Hemingway. You don't. You don't have children yet, <laughs> and your friend, your buddies say, "Let's go run with the bulls," and you believe them that they're actually going to run with the bulls, not from them, until you look around and wonder where they went. Uh, that's how you find yourself Jesus running with them. Christ. Have you lost your mind? I could. I read this. I couldn't believe it. You know, my sources are telling me this stuff. Anyway. Well, look, Chris, I could talk uh, with you all day. Your your great, uh, great radio interview, my God. So, but I uh, always give my guests the last word. I know you're very busy because you got you know all these other big deal uh, media things lined up that you got to do this afternoon and sue more people and everything. So I'm going to hand you my Shure SM7B dynamic microphone, and this is your opportunity to speak directly with my listeners here at One Dimitri Radio. You're free to repeat key points, bring up new points, and of course to promote shamelessly anything and everything you want including your new runaway bestseller so chris horner my microphone is yours well i appreciate that look we are doing uh public service here and these are groups that depend upon contributions so if anybody wants to support this kind of work you can go to eelegal.org or cei.org what we're doing is we're 501c3 nonprofits. We are charitable institutions, educational and legal institutions, and we are here to educate the public about what your government is up to. That phrase is actually from a Supreme Court opinion, the first one interpreting the Freedom of Information Act, which this administration is particularly not fond of. They're the most secretive administration in the country, and it has set the tone. We found state attorneys general not just abusing their offices in this way that we've been discussing, but trying to hide it. So we're going to court to extract these records. We're doing pretty well. We won't win every one, but we certainly are educating the public about how office is being used and abused. So if you like this and you want to protect your freedoms, work for the pro-liberty movement in any way, help us out. What we're doing, and this is the most timely issue, again, we've been exposing through CEI the schemes at EPA with their phone. They're, they're using text messaging instead of emails and destroying thousands of them, caught the administrator doing that, claiming, well, they were all work-related, all, all personal on my work phone, uh, the, the, the false identity, using Gmail to write these rules that were just argued in the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals last week on Yahoo with green groups from which they staff the agencies. We found all sorts of small-c corruption, maybe some big-c corruption, too, and this is extremely important work, and I have a feeling, it, in fact, no matter which way the election goes, this is going to be even more important because you want to get these things out before they're destroyed. And you need to be able to have groups like us for, for anybody who's interested in public service to turn to for an understanding of what's been going on and what they might do if they get office, how to clean up house. So 
You can read about this in my books, Politically Incorrect Guide to Global Warming, Red Hot Lies, Power Grab. And then I actually wrote a book about all of this when it was just blowing up called The Liberal War on Transparency, where I disclosed private servers, (laughs) true story, private servers, Gmail accounts, texting, and you name it, as a way to hide what government employees, elected officials, political appointees are doing to way to hide them from laws that they publicly insist they support. In fact, I'll let you know, we even have Politico and other reporters using these Gmail accounts and Yahoo accounts and text messaging with these people, even as they run around saying, oh, the Freedom of Information Act is so sacred if it involves people we don't like, but we're going to go offline with people we work with in government. All of this needs to come out, and we're trying to make that happen. Chris Horner, you are a terrific radio guest. We're going to get you back on as soon as your schedule permits. Keep up the great work, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you, Demetri. You as well.